So we've learned that if f is a function of two variables, so f is a function from r2 to r, and we're going to integrate f over a rectangle, we want to compute this integral. And let's draw a picture of the region that we're going to integrate over. It's a rectangle. And let's say it's the rectangle R, it's the rectangle where A, X goes from A to B, Y goes from C to D. We're going to integrate F over this region. We have learned that the integral of F over R can be expressed as an iterated integral. It's equal to the integral from A to B of the integral from C to D of f of x, y, dy, dx. And let's look at this. In the inner integral, y goes from C to D. We're integrating with respect to y. In the outer integral, x goes from A to B. We're integrating with respect to x. Now, it's equally true that this integral can be expressed as the integral from C to D of the integral from A to B of f of x, y, dx, dy. And notice now, when we write it this way, in the inner integral, x goes from A to B. We're integrating with respect to x. And in the outer integral, y goes from C to D. We're integrating with respect to y. So the fact that this integral over r can be expressed either like this or like this, that fact is called Hubini's theorem. And this is what we use in this class to typically to evaluate integrals. And in this video, I'm going to show, I'm going to walk through three examples um, of actually using this formula. These are examples taken from section 15.1 in, in the textbook. So first example, let's do the integral of x minus 3y squared dA, integral over r, where r is the rectangle where x goes from 0 to 2, and y goes from 1 to 2. Let's draw a picture of this rectangle. x goes from 0 to 2, and y goes from 1 to 2. So we have this rectangle. We want to integrate over this rectangle. So uh, let's use Fubini's theorem. Fubini's theorem says that this integral is equal to, let's say this is what we want to compute. This integral is equal to the integral from 0 to 2 of the integral from 1 to 2 of x minus 3y squared dy dx. Now let's evaluate this inside integral. Here, in the inner integral, we're integrating with respect to y. So we think of x as being held fixed. We have a fixed value of x. It's like a constant. And we're integrating with respect to y. We need an antiderivative of this function with respect to y. So here it is. Uh, x, y minus y cubed. That's an antiderivative of our function with respect to y. That was just like single variable calculus. And we're evaluating this integral. So we take our antiderivative and evaluate it at the endpoints. So we evaluate this antiderivative from y equals 1 to y equals 2. When we plug in 2 for y, we get 2x minus 8. And when we plug in 1 for y, we get x minus 1. So all together. Once we simplify, we're left with x minus 7. That's what the inner integral is equal to. OK, so now we have discovered that star is equal to the integral from 0 to 2 of x minus 7 
dx. Now we just have to do this integral, and now it's really a, totally a single variable calculus problem. So what's an antiderivative of this function? It's x squared over 2 minus 7x. We take our antiderivative and evaluate it at the endpoints, so from 0 to 2. When we plug in 2 for x, we get 4 over 2, which is just 2, minus 14. And when we plug in 0 for x, we just get 0. So what we're left with is minus 12. That's the final answer in that example. Okay. Next problem. The next example we're going to do is we're going to do the integral of y times the sine of xy dA. We're going to integrate this over the rectangle R. Remember, Fubini's theorem only applies when we're integrating over a rectangle. So we're, we're going to integrate over the rectangle R, where R, this is the rectangle where x goes from 1 to 2, and y goes from 0 to pi. We use this notation to describe a rectangle. This is the range of x values. This is the range of y values. So by Fubini's theorem, let's say this is the value we want to compute. This integral is equal to the integral from 0 to pi of the integral from 1 to 2 of y times the sine of x, y, d, y, x goes from 1 to 2. So in the inner integral, we're integrating with respect to x. And y goes from 0 to pi. So in the outer integral, we're integrating with respect to y. Okay, now let's evaluate this inner integral. We're integrating with respect to x. That means we think of y as being held fixed. y is like a constant as we evaluate this integral. And so what's an antiderivative of this function with respect to x? So the answer, this is just a single variable calculus problem. If we think of y as being just a constant, we're integrating with respect to x, it's a single variable calculus problem. And an antiderivative with respect to x is minus cosine of x times y. And if you to check that this really is an antiderivative, just take the derivative of this and use the chain rule. So the derivative of, according to the chain rule, the derivative of this thing is minus is going to be sine of x y. The derivative of minus cosine is sine. So sine of x y times the derivative of the inside, and we're taking the derivative with respect to x, so the derivative of the inside is just y, so it works out correctly. You can also use u substitution to find this antiderivative if you prefer to do it that way. You can just use u substitution. So now we have to take our antiderivative and evaluate it at the endpoint, so from 1 to 2. When we plug in 2 for x, we get minus cosine of 2y. And when we plug in 1 for x, we get minus cosine of y. So simplifying, we get cosine of y minus cosine of 2y. OK, so we have discovered that the integral we wish to compute turns out to be equal to the integral from 0 to pi of cosine of y minus cosine of 2y dy. And now this is a problem. This is a single variable calculus problem. What's an, what's an antiderivative of this function that we're integrating here? Well, it's uh, sine of y minus sine of 2y over 2. There's our antiderivative. And let's take our antiderivative and evaluate it at the endpoints from 0 to pi. When we plug in pi for y, we get sine of pi. And sine of pi is just 0. So that's a 0. 
And here we get sine of two pi. Sine of two pi is also zero. Okay. Now what happens when we plug in zero for y? Here we get sine of zero, which is zero, and here we get sine of zero, which is also zero. So the whole thing works out to just be zero. Cool. Now here's a comment about this example. Remember, with Fubini's theorem, we have two options. We can do either we can set up, we can evaluate this integral either this way or this way. We have two options. Sometimes one of the two options turns out to be easier, and that's the case in this example. So let's look at what would have happened in this example. We're trying to do this integral here. What would have happened if we had tried to do it the other way? So we, if we had tried to do it the other way, then we would have said, this integral is equal to the integral from one to two of the integral from zero to pi of y sine of x, y. Now, when we're doing it this way, the inner integral is with, with respect to y. And the outer integral is with respect to x because in this problem, x goes from one to two y goes from zero to pi. But now look at this, look at the, the integral we're faced with when we do it this way. If we try to evaluate this inner integral, in other words, if we try to integrate this with respect to y, it's actually more difficult. We actually have to use integration by parts to evaluate this inner integral. And that makes it uh, much more laborious than what we had to do the previous way. So this is an example where um, one of the two options that Fubini's theorem gives you turns out to be significantly easier than the other option. Okay, now let's do example three. And this is problem 33 from section 15.1. We're going to do section, this is section 15.1 in the textbook, problem 33. We're going to do the integral over the rectangle r of y times e to the minus xy dA, where r is this rectangle, x goes from 0 to 2, y goes from 0 to 3. We're using this rectangle notation. x goes from 0 to 2, y goes from 0 to 3. So. This integral is equal to, by Fubini's theorem, the integral from zero to three of the integral from zero to two of y times e to the minus xy dx dy. Let's evaluate the inside integral. In the inner integral, we're integrating with respect to x. So we need an antiderivative of this function with respect to x y is being treated as a constant for the moment. And here's an antiderivative, minus e to the minus x, y. If you take the derivative, let's check that that's correct. If you take the derivative of this function with respect to x, holding y fixed as a constant, and you use the chain rule to take the derivative, then this is what you get. So this is a correct antiderivative of this function. And if you prefer, you can use u substitution to find this antiderivative. So now that we have our antiderivative, let's evaluate it at the endpoints. So let's evaluate the antiderivative from zero to two. When we plug in two for x, we get minus e to the minus two y. And when we plug in zero for x, we get minus e to the zero, which is just one. So simplifying, we get one minus e to the minus two y. Okay, so now we're ready to evaluate the outer integral. We've discovered that the integral that we want to evaluate is equal to the integral from zero to three 
of one minus e to the minus two y dy. Okay, now this is a problem from single variable calculus. And to solve it, we need to find an antiderivative of this function. And what's an antiderivative of this function? Well, it's y minus, actually y plus e to the minus two y over two. You can check this antiderivative is correct just by taking its derivative. The derivative of y is one. The derivative of this term, if you use the chain rule, is minus e to the minus two y. So this antiderivative is correct. And now we need to evaluate our antiderivative from zero to three. When we plug in three for y, we get three plus e to the minus six over two. When we plug in zero for y, we get zero plus e to the zero over two, which is just one half. So simplifying, the final answer that we get is five halves plus e to the minus six over two.